Many here didn't know today was the day. I heard about it. I wasn't sure when it was coming into effect. Living on the streets for three years, Sarah McDonald calls the move a start, especially since police will stop seizing small amounts. Definitely prevent a lot of crime because when it gets taken, then people have to do more things, whatever, to get it. So, And the more desperate people are, the more risky and stupid things they're going to do. We will work closely to... A Ottawa says it granted BC's request to decriminalize in the hopes of reducing overdoses. On average, more than six people die every day in BC. We will be able to reduce the stigma, the fear and shame that keep people who use drugs silent about their use or using alone and help more people access life-saving supports and treatment. BC asked for a limit of 4.5 grams. Ottawa decided it would be two and a half of cocaine, meth, MDMA and opioids, generally about the size of a quarter. Police officers have received training on the new rules, though generally haven't been arresting people for small amounts of drugs since 2020, but they still seized them. This model that we're moving towards is destigmatizing that drug use so they don't fear you know, a police officer's interaction, but hopefully we can direct a person to help and support. Although police chiefs support the move, they worry about the possible increase in public consumption, while others say the way to prevent deaths is to prescribe a safe supply. It's a step in, the positive, in a positive direction, but it's a half measure. And we need urgent, comprehensive intervention that addresses the fact that the, the drug supply at this moment is toxic and killing people. I think it's definitely going in the right while McDonald worries um, about a lack of treatment options. I, I knew someone who was waiting for a few months to get into it and then they, miss, they missed the day and then they had to go back on the wait list and then it's like so um, upsetting. And then you... So Susie, what has the government said in terms of, of how they plan to measure the effectiveness of this new approach? Well, it says they haven't actually decided what the indicators are going to be, but they have promised to release that data every quarter, not just at the end of the three-year pilot. And this is data they will likely be looking at as they consider an application from Toronto for decriminalization. They also are promising more support for treatment options for people. And this comes as the coroner is set to announce how many British Columbians lost their lives to overdoses in 2022 on Tuesday. Adrian. All right, Susie De Silva in Vancouver tonight. Thank you, Susie.